All right, welcome back to this next part of the modeling of the stylized car. Fundamentals of 3D modeling for games. This is going to be the unwrapping and preparing for texturing. In this video, we'll be taking a look at creating a set of UVs for our car, bringing them into Substance Painter, where we'll do our initial bakes in preparation for texturing. What I have visible here is my low poly car. If I open the outliner and select everything, you'll see that everything has been named according to Substance Painter preferences, using a name with an underscore low for all of my low poly meshes, and an underscore high with the same prefix name for all of my high poly meshes. My car happens to have 13 meshes for the low poly and also 13 meshes for the high poly. Before doing my UVs, it is important to note what types of materials I'm gonna create and the number of textures I'm going to be using on this car. I've decided to use four different material IDs for the car. One for the glass, one for the chrome, one for the painted metal of the car, and one for the rubber. Putting each separate material into its own different texture slot will allow me to get a larger, higher resolution texture on the entirety of the car. This will make it more expensive in a game. However, for an asset like a car, I believe that this is going to be okay. Step one. Let's begin unwrapping. I'm gonna first go and select here the glass, and I'm going to add my tail lights and the front lights, including the headlights, fog lights, and turn signals. If I hit control one, we can isolate these assets. Up in the top of the toolbar, the little green icons with the little checkerboard inset in front of them are the shortcuts to enter the UV editing tools. We're gonna to open the third from the right. This is the UV editor. And when we open this, we'll get a look at the default UVs that are on the geometry we created. Now, all geometry has UVs assigned to it, usually based off of the base primitives that were used to create those shapes. You can see here that all of my UVs happen to be inside the zero to one box, and they are of no use to us. We are getting a lot of contorting and stretching and these shapes don't really represent the shapes that we're getting over here. Now, in order to actually see whether or not we're properly unwrapping this, I'm going to be assigning a material to my assets here that'll let me see whether or not I'm stretching anything. So with the asset selected, I'm gonna right click and hold it down. I'll go down to assign new material I'll assign a blin material to these objects. And now in the attribute editor, I'll head over to the blin one channel and rename this glass. I can also go and add a texture to the color slot. We could just use a checkered texture here. However, I'm instead going to add a file, which I'll load up and I'll grab from my textures. I have a set of images that I prefer to use. If I can find them, where's my pictures? Pictures, obviously not the right folder. Let's try this again. There we go, pictures. And in here, I'm gonna go to, uh, let's see, global textures. And I'm going to use, I've got a lot of things in here, um, a 2K, that's 2K by 4K, there's 1024. Let's use the 1024 grid. And essentially what this image is, well, that's the normal map edition. We don't want that one. Let's grab, okay, we'll just use the 4K one. So I'm gonna use this, uh, this image here. And what this is essentially, if I go and turn on the texture display, Um, this does not appear to be working. Let's try that again. Glass, file, there we go. 
And let's go load that 4K image up again. So there. So what this is going to give us is not only a checkerboard, uh, but a checkerboard with these little numbers in it here. Uh, and what I use these numbers for is a means of identifying when geometry has been flipped inside out. So if you can read the number 64, then I know that it's actually the right way. Now, the reason I'm using this number 64 is that this grid, one created in Photoshop, each of these squares, both the white and the black, are 64 pixels in height and 64 pixels in width. So that gives me an idea as to what my resolution of my texture is going to look like as well. Okay, now we can enter the UV editor and we can begin to look at the UVs for this asset. Now, within the UV editor, it is also displaying our texture and that's actually making it a little too hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to use the button up here. This is the show texture and I'll turn it off, allowing me to just see my UVs. Now, in order to get a preliminary unwrap on here, I don't want to start working with what I have. I'm just going to go and select all of the polygons from these assets, and I'm going to use the planar map. That is the first icon here. The planar map will just do a planar projection across our assets. Now, I'm going to scale this thing out until it looks more square. I'm going to use the red crosshair here, select the rotation tool, and I'm going to rotate this thing until it's facing forward as well. Now, this part doesn't really matter. This is just something that I prefer to do. So now, if I go into faces, I can grab the faces from our windscreen and move them up. The faces from our rear window, which I can move up. Now, if we go look at the faces from the rear window, we'll see that they are indeed inverted. So I'm going to need to flip this thing around. This is a result of the projection. We've got our side windows. This is both the passenger door and the rear door, our uh, rear window. And then the driver's side window on this side and the rear uh, driver's side window on this side. We have our tail lights, And everything has now all been kind of grouped together, which is really nice. Now, let's go take a look at the headlights and see what we've got here. So the, t the headlights are actually just a domed hemisphere. There's nothing but glass in this material. So this object and this object, which are both going to be glass, I'm going to move up here because they, to me, are already unwrapped the way that I like them. Now, we can see there is a little bit of stretching going on here. You can see that 64 being skewed across. I'm going to have to adjust that. But it is already got its seams where I'd like them. So we'll leave that like that. The side windows, too, can be moved up. They, too, already have seams where I'd like them. The remainder of UV islands down here do not conform to the, what we'd like in terms of seam allowance. So if I go in and grab edges here and double click this edge. So if we look at this turn signal here, this is going to be a glass dome sitting on a chrome cylinder. Now I could unwrap these two things together and do a texture projection just like this. However, it's going to be very hard and it's going to be um, very noticeable that there is a set of seams that runs along here in our textures, or not a set of seams, but rather uh, pixelization between the chrome and the glass. We're going to get kind of a feathered stepping that happens here. So what I'm going to do instead is grab this edge. This is the edge that separates the glass from the chrome. And I'm going to go to Cut Sew, and I'm going to go to Cut. Shortcut for this is Shift X. That will have created a new line all the way through our mesh. I can now go to Polygons, grab all the polygons for the faces, for the glass, and I can move them up and over with the rest of the meshes. This leaves us with just the chrome elements here. Now what I'll do with the chrome elements is I'm going to add yet another seam. Again, that shortcut is Shift X. Once that's done, we're going to need to straighten this out. If I go to Modify and Optimize, the Optimize tool here, using the Unfold 3D setting, is going to straighten this thing out slightly. 
Now, it won't ever become perfectly straight, but it'll get to be a little bit of an arc. When it's an arc, I can straighten it out a little bit by hand using the rotation tool, followed by going into straighten shell, or straighten UVs, rather. When I do this, it will straighten it out. Now, we did lose some of our UVs here. We lost the inner section of polygons, this row here. So, I'm going to grab the upper set of polygons and just move them up a little. That is now exposed the lower set of vertices. And so, we'll just move this vert over and this vert over until we get a nice, clean, and straight mesh. This is also now complete and can be moved up with the other meshes. That process needs to be repeated for each of the other five front lights and the two tail lights. The tail lights contain two different pieces of glass on a chrome background. They contain the turn signal and the brake light. Here, I'll shift X to break them off, separate them from the chrome, and move them up with the other meshes that are done. I'll need to do the same to the passenger side taillight grabbing the border that surrounds the turn signal and the border that surrounds the brake light. Shift X to separate them and I'll pull the chrome border aside. These two can be placed up top. They're ready to go. Lastly, I'll grab the border that separates the front from the side of the chrome in the rear windows or in the rear lights and I'll separate those as well. This will give me yet again a nice clean straightened version of the front and then just the sides. And with the sides we're gonna go and split those again and optimize should actually do a really good job here. So if I go Optimize Settings and Apply, we should eventually get these things to be pretty straight. If I go to Modify and Straighten UVs, we'll have incredibly clean UVs. Those can go up top. Again, we'll go over to the headlights and we'll return to separating these from the chrome that surrounds them. Now I'm going to try and do all of these at once. I'm going to select this edge, this edge, this edge, and lastly, on the passenger side turn signal, this edge. That should be all of them. I'm going to use Shift X to break that apart. And then I'll grab each of the glass dome segments and I'll bring those up with the rest of my UVs that are done. I can return now to the chrome perimeters and here I'm going to enter edge mode, grab an edge and split it on each of these segments. With that done I can go into polygon mode, go to modify, go to optimize, and apply several times until these things essentially stop moving, which appears to be now. Next, I'll enter rotate mode, and I'll just do the first mesh here. I'm going to rotate it nice and clean. Modify, straighten UVs, modify, straighten UVs, and we can do these other two as well. Modify, straighten UVs, and lastly, the turn signal, straighten UVs. 
Here, I'll go and bring these things all near each other to make the next portion a little bit easier to do. Again, I'm just going to grab the first row of vertices. Hmm, that did not seem to work. So there we go. There we go. There we go. And on the little one, there we are. So again, I'm going to head into the vertex UV selection and move these things over until they align. Nice and straight. And then down the right hand side. Align. Align. And align. With that done, these two are ready to go. Now I'm going to make sure that I select the entirety of both meshes here again to have all of them show up here. And I've got a little bit of relaxing that I need to do with some of these meshes. Now, I don't want to do this globally to everything I have selected because once I relax some of these meshes, anything that I've straightened out because I would like it to be straight will then become curved again. And that is the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to go and just grab the polygons from the windshield, the rear windshield, and the side windows. I'll select each of these and each of my glass domes as they too require a little bit of relaxing. Just a quick look at the tail lights, and I believe they're going to be okay. There is a little bit of compression along the top, but I think overall they should be fine. To relax these, I'm going to go to Modify and Unfold. Here, I'll be using the Unfold 3D settings, and I'll just hit Apply. With that done, again, I can go and double check that we are seeing very nice squares in our UVs. And that each of the 64s is legible and none of them are inside out. Here you can see we are getting inside out in the tail lights, but I believe this too is going to be okay. Once we go to modify and layout, I again I'm going to use the unfold 3D settings and I'll lay these out. The layout will attempt to place these meshes as large as it can inside of the zero to one box, taking up as much space as possible without any overlap. Here I'm just watching the percentage as it goes. And there, it's gone and packed them. Now, if we double check what's happened here, we can see that indeed, these have been flipped inside out or have not been flipped inside out. They are still inside out. So I'm gonna need to flip them the right way. I'm gonna go and find each of the meshes that is inside out, and this should be just both tail lights. We're gonna go to modify, and we're gonna see if there's a flip inside here somewhere. There it is, flip. Once flipped, the numbers should now be legible. I can see that that is not the case for these outer perimeters. They too were nice and clean to begin with. So again, all of the numbers are legible. More importantly, the layout has made sure that each of these 64s, each number and each of the grids that appear in this texture are all exactly the same size. 
Now, because I've done my flip, I've gone and broken my UVs. So I'm going to, again, go to Modify and Layout. Again, we'll let this cycle through. And upon completion, the glass UVs should be done. There we are. Beautiful. Nice and clean. All packed into one group. I'll close the UV editor and the UV toolkit. And these meshes are now complete. And in control one, we can then again see the rest of the car. If I go back into my attribute editor, We can go back into this file and we can turn off the image if we wanted. Or we can actually go and switch this to be a different image. So here, I'll go and assign another material. This one I'll make blin yet again. And this blin will change the color to red. I should also name this material glass. Now it's putting the one here because there already is a glass material and that's fine. Let's work on the next bit. This is going to be the chrome. Here I'll go and select the hubcaps door handles, the mirrors, the bumper, and the radiator or the grill in front. This looks to be all the components that I want to be chrome. Control one will isolate them. And I'm going to right click and instead of assigning a new material, I'm going to as associate this with the first glass material. Here we're going to rename this UVWs. Now I'll just continue to add this material to each element as I unwrap it. So with these things all selected, again, we'll open the UBW editor. Again, we'll do a planar projection. This is just going to ensure that everything and all the seams are nicely cleaned up. And now we can begin placing seams where we want them and unwrapping these assets as we see fit. I'll begin with the hubcaps since they will have no seams. This makes them essentially already done. I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to unfold these objects and simply move them aside. They're now ready to go. Again, a quick double check in the UV editor or in the 3D editor. And we can see that this hubcap is filled with perfectly square 64s. Next, I'll tackle the door handle. I'll go and isolate this object in 3D space and in 2D space. And here, I'm going to go and enter edge mode. And I'll split these vertices apart. I'll drag this up and do it to the other side as well. Uh, this edge that I'm selecting is the inside center of the door handle. That is the least likely place where someone will see a texture seam. I'll select the meshes, the polygons. I'm going to go into Modify, and I'm going to go into Optimize. 
And here we're going to get a couple of kind of bizarre shapes. Now, you'll notice that one of them didn't play nicely, and one of them did end up very much the way that we wanted it. This other object, if we were to go and flip it, should then unfold quite nicely as well. Again, due to the nature of the planar projection, half of the car is inside out. I'm going to grab these two objects, and I'm also going to straighten their UV shells. This, again, is going to reduce the amount of stair-stepping we get along the perimeter. They, too, can be moved up with the wheels. The rear bumper. This is going to be a fairly easy one as well. I'll pull the sides off of the bumper using these edges. Shift X to break. Then I'm simply going to grab an edge that runs down the center of the bumper. Here removing it in my UV editor from the places I don't want it to be. And I'll split this as well. This is going to give us a seam through here. Now again, if I grab these polygons and I return into the unfold tools, did not do as I expected it to. There we are. One rear bumper. Again, worth double checking that everything is perfectly square. Again, we're going to have a mismatch in terms of the scale of our grid, but that'll fix once we lay these objects out. The front bumper, since it shares its topology with the rear bumper, can get the exact same UV layout. Here, selecting the edge that runs around the side where I'll split it, followed by an edge that runs along the center that I can also split. This way I can remove the sides and we'll go and unfold and unfold. And these objects are now ready to go. Next we have the rear view mirrors. Here I'm going to select the glass, the mirror part of both rear view mirrors. Holding control and edges, I can select the edges that run around the perimeter. This will allow me to again select the glass and remove it. Again, I'm going to go and unfold these. Now the unfold here is running an error. And this error has to do with the fact that these are currently end gons. So I'm simply going to do a planar projection. Which I'm going to go in, scale out, and rotate. We'll see if we can't get this to look a little bit better. And let's try that again. Actually, instead of the planar projection, maybe what I'll do is just do a box projection. And there we have it. Eventually, I'm going to need to correct this and make these things not end-gons. I'll have to quad them up so that they work quite nicely. Now, heading back into the mirror, I'm going to grab the edges that surround the arm. Okay, this goes all the way around in a circle. And I'm going to split that. 
And again, I'll do the same on the opposing mirror, which I'll split. And I'll split the edges down the middle. This should give me two cylinders that should unfold quite nicely. Modify, unfold, and apply. Again, we'll double check, and we'll also straighten these out. The remainder of the mirror will split along an edge. Here I've grabbed the edge along the center and I'll split it. Ensure I get all of it. And again, polygon mode, modify, unfold, and apply. My mirrors are now unwrapped. Lastly, the grill. Now I actually can see here that while modeling the grill, I left some polygons hidden. This is a mistake and should not have happened. Many times while unwrapping, you will find mistakes that you made while modeling and we can use this opportunity to correct them. Here, I'm going to select each of the side faces that exist on the grill, and I'll delete them to remove them. Next, I'm going to separate the grill sides from the curvature around the front of the grill. So here I'm just going to find the edge that separates the interior from the exterior and place a cut. This would allow me to separate that rear piece out. I'll grab the edge that runs down the center and I'll split that as well. I'll also find the edge that runs around the perimeter of the back. And it too will get split. Now, if I optimize these pieces, followed by an unfold. And a straighten. This piece is now done. And the rear of the grill is now done. Next, I'll take the front of the grill and move it forward, taking what remains of the grill, and I'll optimize these. That doesn't appear to work. So we'll try and unfold. And again, they're collapsing into a singular point, indicating to us that something has gone wrong. So I'll do a planar map. This time we'll rotate the planar map. Here I'm going to grab the little red gizmo, the rotate tool, and I'll rotate this to the front. Where again, we'll modify and optimize. 
well, by modify and straighten and modify and unfold. And those pieces are now done. Lastly, we have the perimeter of the front of the grill. Here too, we're going to optimize to begin with. Followed by grabbing some vertices or edges would make more sense. And I'm just going to grab the edges that run along the center and split them, giving me then two segments for this grill. I'll return to polygons. I'll optimize. This will start to spread these two objects out. And they will never become straight. So manually, I'm going to go in with my rotation tool and I'll straighten them. And I'm not being completely accurate in my straightening. I'm just getting it close enough so that the straighten tool can take over. So now, modify, straighten, and those objects too are ready for packing. Now I just simply select everything, modify, and layout, and let the software run through its process of laying these objects out in the 0 to 1 box. And there we have it. All of the chrome elements nicely packed. If I exit isolation mode, these two are now prepared to get their own material. I'll right click, assign a new material. I'll choose blend from the list once again, and I'll change its color. This time, I'll choose yellow. I can rename the glass material to simply glass now. And I'll rename the blend material chrome. Next, I'll select the rubber elements, of which there are only two. The tires, which is comprised of all five tires and the little rubber trim that runs along the front windshield. I'll isolate these objects, enter my UVW editor, and do a preliminary mapping of these objects. Here there are several things that we're going to need to change in the geometry before we do anything. First, I realize that I made an error in modeling, and there is a hole along the rubber trim. This occurs right along the symmetry line. I'll select both top and bottom along the center, showing me that there are 16 vertices, which I'm going to fuse together and lower the threshold. Now that there are eight, I am assured that the object is now one object. The other correction that needs to be done has to do with our tires. We have a collection of five tires, which all contain tread. The tread was only created for the high poly version of the tire and was never removed from the low. 
So we'll need to go remove it from the low. First, I'm going to delete the passenger side tires as well as the half waypoint of tires on the passenger side along the rear. This is just going to increase the amount of time or decrease the amount of time required to clean this object up. Next, I'm just going to go and double click on each of the edges that runs along the treads. I'll try and do this in a place where I can see all of the treads. This will allow me to go through and do each of them without having to spend time in between moving the camera. Once all of the tread edges have been selected, Control Backspace will remove them, leaving us with a very clean cylinder. I'll do the same to the rear tire. Again, control backspace will remove all of my edges, leaving me with a nice clean tire. Lastly, I can do the one along the center. This is the spare tire that exists on the rear windshield of the vehicle. Again, I'll select all of the edges and control backspace to remove them. leaving only just the half tire. With the cleanup done, I can go again and mirror these objects. I'm going to hit undo. And try the mirror again. So it appeared that my mirror is off and that it is using a point off in the distance. This is an indication to me that I've actually gone and moved my vehicle. I'm going to exit isolation mode and go reposition each of my assets. Because everything was modeled at the origin, it's a simple matter of zeroing out the meshes to place them back where they belong. Now, I can mirror these objects together again. Again, I'm going to need to adjust the threshold just to ensure that I don't break my mesh. With that done, we can re-enter the UV editor. Again, I'm going to do a planar projection just to ensure that I don't accidentally break any of my meshes in places that I don't want them broken. Ideally, I'll break the tread off of each of the tires. This will get a very nice straightened UV island. I'm going to need to add a split somewhere for each of these objects. Next, I'm 
we're going to go and do a unfold. To flatten these things out, I'll move them aside. And now, it would appear as though we've lost some of our tread. There it is. It was just made incredibly small. I'm going to unfold these objects alone, followed by a straighten, and bring them aside. Lastly, I'm going to go do the windshield trim. And here too, I'm going to add an edge along center. where I can break this mesh so that when I optimize it we can get something near about the right shape. Again, it's not going to be exact nor will it be straightenable so we'll have to go straighten it manually. Here I just select a branch, rotate and move, select the next bit that's crooked, rotate and move, and select the next bit that's crooked, rotate and move. This should provide us with a mesh that can be straightened. Because the straighten didn't work, means that they're just not quite straight enough. So we'll try rotating and straightening again. If that doesn't work, we can always go and grab one of the edges here, running right down the center. And we're going to go into the tools here. And we're going to go and align these things under the align tools horizontally. And now this should give us something that can be straightened. I'll reproduce the same process on the other side. Grabbing some edges, straightening them out. And continue to repeat the process along the length of this object. Again, we'll go to modify and we'll straighten these UVs. With all of the rubber done, 
we can modify and layout. There we have it. Tires unwrapped. Again, if we want to double check our work, we can go and apply an existing material, which would be the UVW's material. And we can double check again that everything is laid out nice and clean, that none of the numbers are inside out. And that everything is nice and square. With that done, we can apply a new material. Again, choosing blend from the list. And here, I'm going to go change the color again. I'll make this one a dark gray. I'll rename it Rubber. Lastly, we have the painted metal material. This is made up of the body of the car, the hood, and the doors. I'll isolate them and I'll assign the UVW material and we can enter the UVW editor. Again, we'll do a preliminary planar map to clean up this asset. We'll take the doors which are mostly done at this point. We just need to flip one. And optimize them. The optimization has made them go a little bit crooked. So if you select a single edge, you can modify and you can orient the shell to an edge. This will straighten the entire object out again. And with that, the doors are done. The next simple piece to do is the hood. We'll bring the hood up here. We'll modify and unfold it. And bring it up here as well. I'll notice that the hood appears to be asymmetrical. This is an indication, again, that something has gone wrong with my modeling. And indeed, one of my vertices has been shifted. I'll simply take that vertex, turn on my vert snaps, and I'll just drag it back over to where it should have been. In here, we'll go and unfold this object again, and it should now look more symmetrical. This leaves us with the remainder of the car. In order to unwrap this thing successfully, we're going to use a feature that automatically creates our seams for us. Since we are very careful while modeling this thing to create hard and soft edges where they needed to be, we can go to Cut Sew and Auto Seam. The Auto Seam will use our cutting along hard edges. When I hit Apply, we'll now get seams in all the right places. We'll also get some seams here in the door. Shift S will merge them back together. Sealing them back up. Now, we just simply need to go in and start removing components from the car and unwrapping them individually. I'll begin with the main body of the truck. Or, why don't we do this? We'll select the entire thing 
and will unfold it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that this object has proper seams, the unfold can do a fairly good job. Now this looks kind of like a crab. Something's gone wrong with this. And there are certain elements here that just don't have the splits that they should have had. But again, this is a fairly easy thing to do. We can go and break these objects up. This is the front component that lives under the bumper. And the front wheel wells. Those are good. This is the inside of the wheel well. And I want to double check that it is including the entirety of the wind of the wheel well, which currently it is not. You can see that there is a row of two polygons here that got excluded from the set. So I'll just select those two edges and use Shift S to grab the other polygons that were missing. Then we can unfold these objects and move them aside. Let's go check the front wheel wells. And indeed, the front wheel wells as well are missing an individual single polygon. So we can go stitch that together, followed by grabbing all of the polygons from the wheel wells and unfolding them. And I turn off my vertex snap. Here we have the rear wheel well. Those two look fine the way they are. We have the foot rail. This too appears to have been split incorrectly. I'm going to unfold this object and bring it down and begin to start welding things back together. This edge, for instance, and this edge. And now that component is done. I'll need to do the same on the other side. And now that component is done. Here we have the front fenders. I may go in and split the front of the front fender from the side of the front fender. This too might just give me a little bit of a cleaner unwrap in regards to these two pieces. Here we have the underside of the vehicle. This also, for some reason, managed to grab the underside of the wheel well. So, we'll grab that edge. And split it. In order to pull the wheel wells off. And we can relax those on their own.
The bottom of the vehicle is now nice and clean. Next, I'm going to separate the top of the vehicle. from the back. I'll relax this piece. This is the top of the crew cabin. And I can see here that there's actually the rear of the crew cabin missing from this component. The rear of the crew cabin is everything along the middle. So I'll grab all of that. And we'll split it off. Followed by stitching it back in its place. And again, doing an unfold. Here we have a seam coming in from the side fender of the rear that I'm going to continue all the way down the vehicle. This should allow me to split the rear into its own component and the rear fenders into their own components. We'll relax the rear fenders and move them aside. There's a single polygon attached here that is not part of the rear fenders but is part of the wi the window so I'll separate it and the rear fenders can get relaxed one more time and moved aside The back of the vehicle can get relaxed. And here I'm going in and just reconnecting some of the trim around the windows. Another unfold of this rear component with the window trim. And it's looking nice and clean. I'm going to grab the rest of the window trim. From the side windows. and connect it. And I'll do the same thing in the front.
there's one more piece in the window trim. This exists in both the front and the rear window and is the top edge. I'll pull this down. That looks nice and complete. We'll just do the same thing down here. And again, we'll do another unfold. The last few components that need uh, doing here, we have this component, which is the underside of the grill. And it's fine just the way it is. We have the rear wheel arches. which are probably good the way they are. They're just a little on the small side. So we'll unwrap those. And lastly, we have the sides of the rear window. So I'll connect those and do a final unfold. With that done, we're ready for a layout. Since there are a lot of components in this particular part of the mesh, the unfold will actually, or the layout rather, will take a little bit longer to do than uh, than before. And so we just need to be patient, let it do its thing. It's gonna go through each shell, reorganizing it, rescaling it, rotating it, and trying to fit it within the zero to one box as best it can. And there we have it. All backed in nice and neat. Again, each of the 64s here looks quite nice. They're all about the same size. None of them are inside out. And if we isolate or unisolate this asset, we can again go in and manipulate its material. So we'll assign it a new material, again using choosing blend from the list. I'm going to do that again. With the blend material selected, I'm going to go rename it, painted body, and I'll just give it another color. Now, the reason for the colors has to do with the fact that we can now identify where each of these textures is going to go. Now, with this done, it's worth selecting the entirety of the vehicle, going to our edit and delete by type history, ensuring that all the changes we just made are not undoable. It's also worth saving your file at this point. And that's it. The car is now ready to be brought into Substance Painter to begin painting. In the next video, we'll take a look at bringing our meshes out of Maya, bringing them into Substance Painter and beginning the process of baking. Until then, we'll see you next time. Take care.